The following presentation is brought to you by the Bayou City Art Festival, downtown Houston celebration of art. It's a celebration of the arts like no other. You know, this is one of the most respected festivals in the country. 300 artists from around the world in the heart of downtown Houston. Oh! Experience the passion. If I don't do something, then I'm not the person that I've always thought myself to be. I think it's going to have a special meaning for a lot of people. The sights and the sounds of the 12th annual Bayou City Art Festival. ABC 13 presents the Bayou City Art Festival. Attention art lovers of all ages, we are only one week away. It's a countdown until Houston transforms to a one-of-a-kind, unique outdoor art gallery. Hello everyone, I'm Don Nelson and join us for a celebration of the arts at Houston's own Bayou City Art Festival. Either standing, shivering, crouched down, kneeling, squatting, or laying down. Ultimate goal of my photography is to bring beautiful things from all over the world to the people that don't have the opportunity to see them. And to be able to see them for what they really are. I don't do any enhancements on my photography. What I did was I wanted to pick a subject matter that didn't have a lot of color, take all the natural color out and saturate it with color. And um, it sort of evolved, and I try to pick up uh, personalities of the dog by using color. And I think it really uh, brings things to life. Oh, this is great. There's a lot of unique art this year. It's, uh, you know, some artists that we've not seen before. Now, this is sort of like the ultimate promotion of recycling. Well, here's to you. <laughs> we have so many talented students in our area, and I'm thrilled about that. Oh, it's incredible. What makes them deep and have the resonance is the fact that light refracts through the glass, hits the paint, and comes back at you. So they look different in the morning light than they do in the evening light. <laughs> we replace the straps free forever. I love it. There's so much for everyone here. It's not just one thing or one form. Oh, I love them. They're great. <laughs> I've been an artist since I was little. As long as I can remember, I've been drawing and coloring. And my mother was a huge supporter of mine. For the past 25 years, native Houstonian Ray Phillips has studied an array of art forms. I spent about 10 years in t-shirts, which is screen printing. I did 10 years in ad layout, computer graphics, digital design, and all those roads end here. Coming full circle from the first artistic elements that shaped his life, Ray continues to push the boundaries of creative expression. The creative process is very exhausting. Uh, it's physical and it's mental. The most asked question is, how did you do that? With every piece, I like there to be soul. When I look at it, it has to, it has to affect me. His highly sought after paintings exhibit the depth of an experienced artist's hand. A layering, texture, and composition that can only come from someone who strives for perfection. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my work. It has to be incredibly good before I'm happy with it, and it won't leave the studio until I'm happy with it. When the piece is finished and somebody spends their hard-earned money, they acquire it for their collection, and it's part of their world and their home. Cheryl McDonald gives new meaning to the words body art. I'm into the body, I'm into people. It comes from my heart, it comes from my mind, the thoughts that I have. But it's also very relaxed. She brings her passion for life and the human body alive using mannequins as her canvas. Her husband Jimmy, also an established artist, is her biggest fan. I'm very proud of her. He loves me and supports me with everything that I do, and he's excited about what I do. I'm excited about what I do. Cheryl has a very detailed technique using hundreds of photographs that transform her mannequins to unique pieces of art. The process of how I figure out where I want to put what has to do with color. Each piece is one of a kind with a different theme. What inspired me about this piece is my husband's artwork. This guy is covered with my husband's passions. 
how could you not look at him and think, wow. Other than mannequins, I also do heads and hands and put them in a box. My husband makes the box, my husband paints the box. And I have one called NASDAQ, and of course this theme is about money, how you make it, and the time that it takes. I have another one, it's called My Treasure, My Love. The treasure to me is my children. On the hand is a child and treasure. I'm also working on one called Unconditional Love. To me, that's more about our life. We share that with our friends, we share that with our family, and uh, that's, that's, I think that's our purpose. And that's why we do this art. That's another reason to be inspired. Woodworking's been in my family uh, for three generations. For Philip Sheridan, his love and passion is for all things wood. All the wood's exotic woods, and they come from all over the world. This self-taught talent takes undistinguished pieces of wood and literally turns them into magnificent pieces of art. Philip creates everything from bowls to vases and sculptures. His signature product, pepper mills. The pepper mills are very unique because each pepper mill has 180 to 200 pieces of individual wood in it. What I do is I cut all the individual pieces up, then we glue them together to form a full ring and glue that together, sand it down where it's nice and smooth and flat, and then layer it up into a full pepper mill. My wife makes fun of me all the time that, hey, it's so great that you can make pepper mills <laughs> for a living. Um, but it's, it's amazing what you can do if, if you're willing to put the work and the time into it. I'm very grateful to be able to do what I do. Coming up, think the Bayou City Art Festival is just for art collectors? A butterfly and a flower? Well, think again. A celebration of arts for all ages when we come back. Welcome back to our celebration of the arts. You know, it's hard to believe that just one month ago, the most powerful storm of the season blew through right here in the heart of Houston and the location of the Bayou City Art Festival. All of the debris coming out of the windows and flying down the street. Located in the museum district, the Art Colony Association was one of millions left in the dark. When we had a hurricane on Saturday, and then, you know, you're trying to do things on Monday and you can't do them, you're trying to do things on Tuesday, you can't do them, all of a sudden it occurred to me that, you know, our good intentions and goodwill might not get us through. I mean, there is a reality. We are all around City Hall. Kim reached out to board members, nonprofit partners, and vendors for help and soon realized the entire city was paralyzed in the aftermath of Ike. And it's just an analogy for the way the whole city of Houston was. For a week, no one had any more power than we did. They didn't have offices. They didn't have electricity. You know, they didn't have space, certainly, to take us in, and we're supposed to be raising money for them. There was nowhere to go. You know, losing one day at this stage in the game is catastrophic. Well, you don't have a festival. We need to take care of everyone and really find a space where we could be together so we could make this monstrous task you know, really, really happen. Finally, Houston native Audrey Davenport, owner of Trademark Promotions, came to the rescue and offered a much needed helping hand. Uh, and I said, sure, you know, our conference room has some tables and we have the two small offices at the end. Trademark produces thousands of t-shirts for the Bayou City Festival. Uh, every day is just so important uh, that they could be together and keep on planning. It makes me feel good that we were able to help. Despite obstacles, the Art Colony Association, a staff of only five, has been working tirelessly around the clock to pull off Houston's largest and first fall festival of the year. To host these artists, you know, so soon after like our worst time, and to just really show people like, wow, you know, this is important, and we're here, and we're living, and we're having fun. We are used to putting its foot forward, and this is our spirit. For artist Donald Springer, Galveston Island is very near and dear to his heart and art. This retired architect has spent the past five years as an established watercolorist, painting mostly Galveston scenes. So I started out painting the 61st Street Pier, 
in Galveston because we used to take our sons there fishing. And we'd go out early in the morning and fish and then go for pancakes. So it brought back happy memories for me. I also try to paint pla special places that may not have been painted before. To see all of these go at one time, it is very sad. It is very, it's, it's sad to see that because they may come back, but they won't come back exactly the way they were. He continues to relive his memories with his paintbrush. Many of those things do bring back happy memories for people. And so it, it's nice that I, I still have these and they act as a memento of, of pleasant times for myself and others. But I would encourage the average Houstonian who has gone through in the last two weeks quite a system trauma. The families have been spread apart. You know, Houston went through a huge tragedy with the hurricane and this is, provides a great venue to come together to have a fun-filled day. I think that a lot of things here are pretty amazing. The woodwork is really cool. Parents can bring their pint-sized Picassos to Capital One's Creative Zone for a hands-on experience in expressing themselves. Capital One Bank, through the Arts Festival, is primarily sponsoring the Creative Zone, and that is an interactive activity where these kids come in these big giant tents, and they go through these activities with these 17 local charities and nonprofits and create things on their own. I like to make stuff over here. Look at the Look at, the Look at yours. Look at that. It's beautiful, Annie. You didn't break your arm making hats, did you? No. Oh, just. Coming up, one woman's mission in creating beautiful art for Houstonians leads to life-changing opportunities for thousands of young girls. We go on a 6,000-mile journey around the world. That's next. In June of 2000, Amalata Brown was living in Ghana, working as a management consultant and at the same time discovering a deep love for her own African heritage. But it was a shopping trip to the market one summer afternoon and meeting a young African girl when Amanata discovered her true calling in life. And I turn around and look and this little girl stands up and turns around and looks at us. and. And so she has all of our bags on, on, in this pan on top of her head. And actually I was holding a watermelon, was like the last thing in my hands. And she was looking at me to hand her the watermelon. The young girl was just one of thousands living in poverty and working as load carriers during the day to survive. We just became sort of transfixed on each other. And as we left that market it was, I had this experience of sort of knowing that if I don't do something, then I'm not the person that I thought, that I've always thought myself to be. So we decided to ask every girl that we met if she could change one thing about their life, about her life, what would it be? Every single girl that we asked said exactly the same thing. They all said that they would learn to sew. We felt, wow, that's so doable. All of these girls could say anything. You know, I, I expected people to say things like I would have a big house, you know, I would have a million dollars, just, you know, material things. But what they said was that I would have something that I could give. I would have something that I could do. And one of the things that most inspired me about them, again, was that they weren't asking for charity. They were really asking for an opportunity. We wanted to do something that was, uh, that would provide them a training opportunity at the same time they were being paid for a product that we could sell and continue to generate the resources to continue the effort and bring on more women. Such a simple dream of learning how to sew was the inspiration behind the creation of Baba Blankets. I've always loved the textiles in this region. I mean, it, the artistry is incredible. And so we decided to work with tie-dyes, batiks, woven cloths, and to bring them into products that were based on the African-American quilting tradition. Over the past eight years, Baba Blankets has opened their doors to hundreds of economically disadvantaged women, both young and old. 
They're taught how to create beautiful artistic textile products exported to Europe and the U.S. Proceeds from each sale allow the women to evolve their artistic skills and technical abilities and at the same time helps young African girls to complete secondary education school. Baba Blankets is more than just a charity. It's a social movement that is truly changing and enriching the lives of thousands. I mean, my life just feels like it's full of meaning. I am surrounded by beautiful things all day long, creating beautiful things, and then seeing the smiles that it puts on people's faces. That's, you know, one of the best gifts of all. It's just for people to feel so happy when they see our work. Africa isn't the only culture celebrated at the Bayou City Art Festival. This event helps move Houston into an international stage. The world sets the stage with an array of multicultural performers and international food, beer and wine. From the mariachis of Mexico to Japanese and Indian dance, the sights and sounds of ongoing live entertainment only adds to the weekend's festivity. We've got amazing food here today. We have just every culture. We're running the gamut across the board. I think, um, you know, you want your Greek, you want your Mexican, you want your Chinese. It's wonderful. Is it gyro, 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 gyro? I'm happy to announce that at this festival, we're going to be introducing the newest brand in our multitude of brand families, Budweiser American Ale. So we hope uh, everyone that goes down there enjoys the festival and enjoys uh, Budweiser American Ale and does it responsibly. Under or over? There you got it. She has it over. Oh, look at that. Coming up, only the best make this show. What goes on behind closed doors? That's next. The following presentation is brought to you by the Bayou City Art Festival, downtown Houston's celebration of art. The next one, 889. It's getting harder. Five months before the premiere of the Bayou City Art Festival, a panel of Houston's most prominent art professionals come together. What exactly was that made out of? At the Museum of Fine Arts. That's so bizarre. Their mission? to vote on over 700 artists who applied for a chance to be a part of the downtown festival. These are interesting. It's a blind jury, so we're just judging it from the, you know, the work alone um, and, and only from the few images that are provided. I have two small kids, a wife, and we go to this festival, so I know what my wife would buy. I know what I'd want to put in my kids' room. It's kind of interesting. So what exactly are they looking for? Look at that booth design. Yeah, the benches are really pretty. Well, firstly, quality. It just has to be well made. So I like really sort of clean, sharp, crisp work. Something new, something fresh. Who's doing something that's different, that's interesting? I'm sort of an art festival junkie. I'm looking for something I haven't seen before um, that shows a certain amount of craft or, or just an inspiration and creativity. It'll be fun in the long run to see who gets in and who doesn't. Dr. Gary Bakers is just one of the 300 artists chosen to showcase his drawings at the Bayou City Art Festival downtown. Gary never planned on becoming an award-winning visual artist. His first passion was always medicine. This is what he wanted. He wanted to be a family doctor in a small town, not in a big city. He wanted. He wanted to know everything. He wanted to do everything. His hard work and devotion paid off. Soon he became a practicing family physician, beloved by all in his community of New Boston, Texas. In a small town, you know everything about your patients. You know their families, their parents, their grandmother. You know, it's just nice. But at the age of 38, an unexpected tragedy would strike the Bacher family, and Gary's life as he knew it would be changed forever. I had just taken the children to school and came back and he would normally be getting ready and going off to the office and 
he, he wasn't, he was sitting in the big chair, you know, and I thought, well, you know, get up and go. Of course, I couldn't rouse him and got him to the hospital and... Gary had suddenly suffered a stroke. They said that it was not likely that he would survive and that if he would survive, it would, he would be in a vegetative state. Six weeks later, he proved doctors wrong and awoke from his coma, determined more than ever. It was exciting. We were very optimistic and you know, we really hoped, you know, we prayed that his speech would come back. And then we went through years of therapy, uh, physical therapy, speech therapy. Uh, he did so much to try and regain that speech and the, the verbal skills. You know, we just really kept hoping that, you know, that he would recover well enough to at least work part time. But without the verbal and communication, just could not ever work. Forced to retire from medicine and rethink his life, part of Gary's therapy was to learn to hold a pencil in his left hand. These are the very earliest pieces that he did. He started sketching flowers from his wife's garden, which he could see outside his window. His art just has so much more. There's so much more to it than because it's the, the story and the struggle that goes into it. It's just, uh, just pencil. That's all. Well sharpened pencil. Over the past 20 years, his work has evolved from those first simple sketches to today's meticulous, complex, and breathtaking compositions. The Silent Conversations really aptly, beautifully describes what he does and because he is conversing all the time, even as he's working. These are his silent conversations in our home. Gary's Silent Conversations has been jurored into hundreds of art shows across America. They don't know that he's disabled. He's just another artist. He's competing on the same level. Nobody knows the, the difficulty that has gone into his work, that he's, he's done it with one hand and, and what he's gone through. And so that's, that's the, the really wonderful thing about that. I hope people come away from the festival number one, having a good time with their family and friends. And we see that all the time, people laughing and talking, leaving, and they're, they're lugging something that they've just bought that they're gonna take home and put on their wall. Uh, and they'll live with the rest of their lives. You can enjoy the sights and sounds of the Bayou City Art Festival Saturday, October 18th and Sunday, October 19th right here in the heart of downtown Houston. This is one event, without a doubt, will leave a lasting impression. Thanks for joining us.